tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. What you've just seen is a blight which wanders through the scene and then wanders off. And this is the article about this kind of light. It's not about the point light, but it's about uh, a light which is a kind of uh, unpredictably moving around in the scene. This is the Korean Wikipedia art article here. If you have it in English, it's called Will o' the Wisp or Ignis Fatuus, medieval Latin, is an atmospheric ghost light seen by travelers at night, especially over bogs, swamps, or marshes. And we have a very nice picture here, painted in the 19th century, I guess, the Will o' the Wisp of the Snake by Hermann Hendrich, which is right here. So these lights are hovering here and spreading their little dots here and whatever. I created just a plane here and a couple of primitives here, uh, polygon primitives from these two menus here. And uh, basically what you see now in the middle hovering here is the light. And it, the light moves under the influence of two forces. Uh, and then it moves away from the whole system. The two sources are a turbulent field with a couple of keyframes and a radial field with a couple of keyframes. At the end I move the radial field a little bit in, into this direction to make the light actually wander off into that direction. The light cannot be dynamic. So why is it dynamic? create lights and it's a point light we're talking about this is the point light sits in the center of the scene uh, now when you go to FX the special effects and go to fields and solvers and add for example gravity it gives an error message the gravity node is in the center of the scene so it arrives in the outliner as well so we have the point light and the gravity field but both are not connected so the light doesn't fall down so let's delete the gravity field we have only the point point light in the scene the trick is that we can create a sphere for example and make this sphere be influenced by some field for example a turbulence field now we get a yellow notification here which has to do with a cache which uh, caches the simulation and you see the turbulence affect our sphere so as in many times in computer animation let's extend the frame range here the trick is to hide a certain object and you can imagine which one we're gonna hide so we'll when we hide the the sphere the sphere is still floating around under the turbulence field but we want the light to be going with the sphere the hidden sphere so let's unhide the sphere what we need to do is we pick the spotlight now which is in the center of the scene now and with the middle mouse button we drag it over the sphere. That means the light will become a child of the parent sphere. So right here you see a group now with a plus sign and under that group called polygon sphere is a point light. So when that sphere moves now under the influence of the gravity field you see the point light is not here anymore. So where is it? Let's hide the sphere. It's nowhere because when hiding the sphere we're hiding the whole group. So uh, be, be aware of that. How do we get away from this? <laughs> uh, well, there are several ways really to do it. Right mouse click here and show the shapes. And this is the actual shape which we want to hide. 
So we select that polysphere shape, press H to hide it and here we still have our light. And now the light is moving under the turbulence field will-o'-the-wisp wise through the scene. And now of course the manipulation can start. You can increase the magnitude, you can increase the frequency of, uh, the, of the field, the, how local the field works. We see our light moving all over the place, a little bit up and then down to the left, etc. If we don't want it to penetrate that line, for example, in order to, well, have our light wandering around a scene, always being on top of the ground plane, let's introduce a ground plane now. It sits right here. We can make it much bigger by going here. And since the sphere, which is around that light has a, a dimension of 1 in the current setting, we need to start the simulation with a little bit of distance between the two of them. So let's lower that uh, plane here. The plane doesn't feel hard for the, for the light currently, so the light moves down and goes through that plane, but we can define the plane as something rigid and it's called a passive rigid body because it, we don't want it to fall down or to be moved away by collision with other objects we just want it to s sit there and be hard and felt as hard by the participating objects in the dynamic simulation so now the light goes up as before and it wants to go down and then it bumps off because it feels the ground and it goes up again. And with this, I leave you alone. Bye-bye.